Thread, whatever, whatever one you like. Now, to be honest with you, I'm going to use the, the Danvos Flymaster. It will cover a bit quicker. Now, I'm going to put down a layer of thread along the shank. Obviously, close the eye up. For the rib of the fly, I'm going to use this is a, a number four tinsel, gold tinsel. I'm just going to tie it on the way down. We're basically using the tinsel as a guide for the thread turns. Now these shanks obviously are a bit long, just obviously to suit the style of the fly. And they bounce around a lot, so you just turn your fingers along as you go down. Now, because of the length of the floss, I'm using a stout floss, a thick floss. Piezo's floss, you could use a rayon floss and double up on it, or do what you like. Now, I'm going to take this all the way down until basically just before the barb of the hook. Now, the floss I've got on the floss bobbin holder, and this is the TMCO one, it's the one I use for my thread as well. Now, you can see I've got the stout floss on, I've got the black. Stout floss, and I'm going to bring the thread back up. Carry on all the way back up until we're in line. Well, these hooks, if you look at the hooks itself, I've got one here. Nice form by bending the wire around. So, what I do is use that as a measure. That's the area where I'm going to tie in. The hackle and the, the wing and so on, jungle cock. So that's my measure. So our threads back up, ready for our floss. Now, obviously, it's easier just to whip finish, thread off, and then wind our floss up. to this point here, put my thread back on, now I'm just going to use my uni thread, I prefer uni thread for tying materials on, it's a round thread, it's got, to me it's got more grip, obviously tie your floss off and trim it away, and then bring your rib up, take your time, All the way up to your thread, cross your thread, nice and tight. Just make sure this the tinsel rib is tied in. You could use an oval tinsel, use whatever you've got. And that's your body done. Obviously a lot of wind in there to do that. Now we're ready to tie in some, in this case, hot orange bucktail. Get a few fibres. Them out from the skin, trip it, trim it really close. It's a nice hot orange. Now you could obviously stack these fibres, but I'm just going to just leave them just to the end of the body or so. You catch it underneath. Just make sure that's secure. See how it's sitting. That'll do, do fine. Trim away the waist. I'm just going to tidy up. Just tidy the head area up. Just make sure there's wax on your thread. Hold the shank of the hook as you're winding because it will bounce around a lot. Now, in the throat as well, I'm going to add this is a golden pheasant crest dyed hot orange. I'm just going to 
around my nail just to straight, slightly straighten it out underneath. The length, this will just give it a nice shine. Now, slightly up to the point, anyway, to the point of the hook. Yeah, I'm just going to offer it underneath, come around with two or three just loose turns because I'm, I want to position it and make sure it's sitting right. You can have a wee quick look and check just to see exactly where it is sitting. Once you're, once you're happy with the position of the, the crest, you can then tighten up. Turn away the waist. Now make sure there's wax on your thread. Now for the underwing of the fly I'm going to use this is a golden pheasant crest in yellow. Now I have dyed this yellow just to brighten it up. Again I'm just going to do exactly the same, just run my nail underneath. So it really as you can see it kind of straightens or flattens it out. I just want it to come to the top of the, the shank. Again, two or three turns just to see how it's going to sit. If you're happy with it, then you can then tighten really up. Make sure it's well tied on. Make sure there's a bit of wax on my thread. Now I'm always thinking about forming the head, a nice taper in the head, so and you do, you do build the head up with these a wee bit and there we are, you can see that nice shine it adds a lovely glisten now the wing itself as well, I'm made up with two colours, hot yellow and hot orange Just uh, and these are, these head necks I'm using, rooster necks from America if you find the feathers, they're a lot straighter Ideal for doing this type of fly. So you, you take one off, and you basically get the natural shape. So you do. Um, now I've got two yellow, one for either side. Just put them together. Now you could put two, the orange and the yellow in together on one side and then the other. But I'm going to do the yellow first. And then just make sure the tips are lined up. Length. Now, when I look at these flies, a lot of the flies, they're not the pair doesn't go too far by the bend. So I reckon probably around about, uh, I would say about an inch or so, just slightly less. One is both the same length, so I'm just going to open out the feathers, uh, remove the fluff. Now, I don't know a huge amount about these streamer patterns. I just basically know what I'm looking for when I'm tying the fly. Now, I'm going to actually slightly offer these. I'll show you once I've caught them in. Just to the side of the head. Not right on the top, so that they sit more roof-like. I don't want them too flat. Now, we can always move them around to get them to sit. And just now, I'm just basically marking the thread turns, or the stem with the thread turns. Making sure they're tied on. Getting in the position you want. You can always go back at this point. If, you're, if they're not sitting right for you. I don't want to be too fussy with them. Uh, you can see the more roof like. And then I'm going to get my orange, my hot orange, do the same. Just line them up. Again, just going to look at the position where I'm going to tie them in. And I don't mind tying them with fibres around the stem. Just to help thicken up. Look at what you're doing. I mean, there's probably a much easier way of doing this, but... You just tie it to suit yourself. It's the same way. Tie in with some of the fibres. I'm not going to bear it because I want it to be slightly thicker. You can see how you get that nice thick. Now at this point, before I go any further, I'll just check everything. 
What I'm trying to do is just basically get the natural shape of the feathers without sort of pressing them and so on. You want to see what the fly is going to look like when it's... You can twist and turn these feathers to suit yourself, but see once they're wet, they'll get into their natural shape. So, if you put them on so they're sitting in the natural shape, that's the way they're going to sit in the water. And then we trim away and tidy this area up. And make sure you've got plenty of wax on your thread. Keep a hold of the hook, obviously. Tie it. Tidy the head area up. I think I need to oil my bobbin holder here. Just say, just tidy the head area if you've got to go up and down a couple of times just to make sure it's nice and secure. And there we are. That looks not too bad, I've seen worse. Now that will pull in together. That will. Just you can moisten your fingers just to help get to see where you are. Sorry, first I'm going to tie in some guinea fill, dyed blue. Feather length, fibre length. I mean, it's no, don't have it too long, obviously. Um, within the head area. I mean, you're looking, I don't know how have the measures, I've just got it by eye, more than anything. So I'm going to tie in the blue guinea fill. You could just put it in as a throat, but I just think well, obviously winding it helps to give it a bit more of a taper. Kind of feels easy to wind, you just do one turn in front of the other, drawing back the fibres. Let's finish off the hackle. It's fine. Make sure you're nice and tight. Again, just make sure the hackle's not going to move, tie it down. Head length, I'm looking at the head. Spare times just to, if you can break off, guinea fill breaks, it's really easy. So, just put a bit of moisture on your fingers just to help pull these fibres slightly together to check where these feathers are sitting. That's not too bad at that. Now we're ready to put on my, what I'm going to put on is bronze mallard, basically the cheeks on these. Now I've got two small bronze mallard feathers here. I've got our, what they call a right and a left. And you can see there, basically what, when I tie these on the bronze, the darker part of the, the bronze mallard is going to be on top. And obviously on your side it's going to be there. Just pulling the fibres together. Now I'm not going to be too fussy with these, I'm just going to tie them on, meaning I'm just going to Make a space. So there we go. Just draw the fibres back, but don't pull these fibres off just now. Just leave them um, to get the length right. Now, just tie them on the side. Just, I'm going to come down with a couple of loose turns. Position these feathers the way you want. Now, Two or three more turns, not tight turns, just to see how it's sitting. Looks not too bad. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side. Obviously check the length, space. Open it out and then I'm going to again come in. Two or three turns just to position the fibres or position the, the feathers. Now, some bro some of the blue is sitting up at the top here, but I'm not too bothered about that. To me, that looks really nice. You can always push them in. Let me see how it's in. Looks, looks okay. And once you're happy, you can then tighten up. I mean, 
make sure you've got plenty of nice tight turns in there so things don't move. Always checking to see how things are sitting because they can move on you. I actually like the natural flow of the fly. This will it should swim really well. And when you trim away the stem either side. Full length I'm just doing it the full length of the head here. And then I can remove these these V ends. Just be careful when you're doing that. And then Carrying on down here, just tidying the head, to always thinking of the taper, the finish. Come back up, ready to tie in my jungle cock eyes. Now I've got two, two eyes the same length, but again, these have got a natural curve, you can see curving away from themselves. The lens now, put them both together, check the length that you want. Maybe say two thirds of the way in. Just going to make a space and tie these on. Do your side first. I'll not put them on uh, together, I'll put them on individual. See so yeah, how that sits. Now, again, you want it to sort of come in in line. Let me go back here. That's okay. Make sure there's wax on your thread. I'm just going to leave that end at the moment. Do my side. Just check the length. Looking from the top of the fly down. That looks okay. See how it's sitting. If they have a natural shape, they do sit nice for you. They, they will. So now to make sure these don't pull out, I'm going to fold back the stems. Just going to fold these back, but I'm going to carry on down. Again, always tidying the head up. Just coming back up, so you fold it these back so they're nice and tight. Away the best. It's okay, and when you quite finish. from away a thread. Just going to have a quick look to see how things are sitting. Now I'm just going to fold the eye a wee bit. I'm just going to take, put my finger onto the eye, take it forward. There's a small crease just in at the, the base. Do the same on my side. This just brings them in slightly. And there we are. And then what I like to do is build the head up. Or with the varnish. First they'll do the super glue. Super glue just basically sets them much quicker. Very hard. Fly lasts a wee wee longer and you've got a nice shiny head. This is a Loctite super glue. Obviously it comes with a brush. It's a brush form or it's called easy brush. Allow that to dry and then you're looking at two or three coats of varnish. Mm -hmm. 